Welcome to a new in the mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel. There's lots of interesting items to show in this video and as you may be aware there is the upcoming 11.11 .11 festival advertised on all of the Chinese sales channels like AliExpress, Banggood etc. I believe they have already started with uh, discounts and with the current prices and inflation that we're going through I'm sure a discount is very much appreciated on these items so as a good salesman would say don't delay place your order today and I'm gonna start the video with this interesting pocket type flashlight and this appeared in uh, the product recommendations and I immediately had to order one it's just this nice compact form factor it's uh, partially made out of plastic for the actual LED light enclosure and it's got this metal carabiner style attachment with a bottle opener feature uh, it's got a magnet on the back plus this uh, tilt adjustment uh, it's got an internal rechargeable battery rated for 650 milliamps it's got this uh, USB type C charging port underneath this protective rubber cap it does come with a uh, short uh, charging cable but in my humble opinion these should be banned they only generate frustration and e-waste because they often contain just the power leads the 5 volt and the ground leads so you end up in frustration trying to use one of these for a different purpose at a later point the LED is a cob type and it's got two colors and by the way this unit comes in a few different variants mine is the type B as advertised by the seller with two colors and four modes that means I get a white uh, on high intensity, a white on low intensity, constant red and flashing red. It's very bright, it's painful to look into this cob, I wouldn't advise you to try that. They say this is gonna get you about one and a half hours on full brightness and two and a half hours on low brightness mode for a full charge. I very much like the unit, uh, I will be hanging this off my backpack when going for a hike or something like that and a link to this will be placed in the description below the video. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times, is running their fifth annual PCB design contest. So if you have some PCB designs that you would like to submit, why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes? You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website linked below. My next item is a bit of a disappointment because this should have been this uh, nice aluminium made bench tool holder rack thing but upon receiving it I realized it's not aluminium it's made from a steel sheet that has been cut, folded and then spot welded which in itself is not a bad thing because it brings some weight to the holder which is good but look at how this has been folded and uh, spot welded it's, it's totally skewed and bent and it just doesn't look nice it's still functional but disappointing for the $20 I spent on it. There's different versions of this with different heights and hole sizes so you have to get one that's appropriate for your use case. The one I have here is 40 holes by 13 millimeter diameter and I have another model ordered uh, which is cheaper but is made out of plastic and we'll see how that turns out. I mean if you don't have a problem with the way this arrives yeah it's still functional and can provide you with a nice way of storing tools on the surface of your workbench but that's going to be up to you to decide as you may be aware I have been a happy user of the best brand stripping tool model number 5023 it's the basic model with different FWG wire size holes but it has served me well and I keep it on the workbench all the time this tool works for AWG 30 up to AWG 20 which is like 99% of the use cases for the type of work that I do However, there is that occasional job where I'm using thicker than AWG 20 wire and for that I do have a few other installation stripping tools but I just wanted the companion to the best tool that is just simple to use. I wanted to have the model, uh, the same model that does the uh, thicker wires. So I ordered the model number BST5021 which you can see here. This one does AWG 22 down to AWG 10 and uh, now I should be 100% covered for the wiring jobs that I do on my workbench um, I like these wire strippers very much they're cheap and reliable they get the job done so I highly recommend these if you're looking for some simple wire stripping tools get both of them from the start so that you're covered for a wide range of wire thicknesses 
My next item is a set of these uh, sewing threading rolls. These are advertised as um, extra strong up upholstery thread uh, for outdoor use made out of nylon. Uh, these are 500 meters long per spool. And I don't know what the numbers uh, on these uh, label tags mean, uh, but they maybe are referring to the number of uh, strands and the strength of the thread. If you know what these numbers mean, uh, please let me know in the comments uh, below. Like I mentioned in a previous video, I will probably be getting a sewing machine. And as my viewers suggested in the comments, I'm looking at a used professional machine as that will likely be getting me uh, optimal results for sewing thick materials and uh, using thick thread like this. So I got these threads to have something to work with uh, when I will be purchasing my sewing machine. Next up, I got a waterproof pouch for storing valuable items. And as I mentioned in a previous video, this year I've started the kite surfing. So I need a way to safely store my car key when I'm on the water. And there are the large pouches, like they're made for smartphones, but that's just too big for my purpose. So I searched a lot on AliExpress until I was able to find this model, which is probably half the size of the smartphone pouch model, but still not as small as it could be for just storing a car key. Ideally, the, the pouch that I'm looking for should be half the size of this and have a slimmer uh, closing mechanism so that it, it doesn't bother me when I'm storing this under the wetsuit. So if you are aware of smaller pouches, please let me know in the comments below. There is this one model selling on Amazon that would be the perfect size and meets the criteria, but $40 plus shipping plus import tax for a key pouch seems a bit much. So this will have to do for now. I never had a multimeter belt or magnetic clip. Even though I own a decent number of multimeters, I never got one included in the default package and I never needed to use one because I don't usually do field work. But recently a friend of mine asked me to take a look at an installation in the field, so I grabbed my trusty Fluke 87. I think I also grabbed my O1 HDS242 portable scope. And to my surprise, due to the position and the way the electrical panel was wired, I had no place to actually put the multimeter or the scope and I needed to use both my hands for probing so that was a bit disappointing and I decided to order one of these uh, multimeter straps from AliExpress and I paid just uh, under $10 for this one and although the product description shows very clearly uh, what you're getting I was kind of expecting to get some kind of if a clip attachment to um, attach or detach easily from the multimeter and maybe allow it to spin uh, on this connecting point. But with this option, which is the cheapest one at $10, uh, you only get this uh, Velcro strap. Uh, so you have to slide this through the uh, multimeter attachment and, and use it that way. But um, I won't be keeping this one attached. It would be getting in my way for most of the work that I do. Uh, but it does get the job done. It will be there in my toolbox if I ever need to take a field trip again. By the way, the magnetic attachment is at this end and it works really well. Next up, here is another fail moment for me when ordering stuff from AliExpress and not reading the full product description. This is once again something that popped up in my recommendation list, a magnetic field viewing uh, film which should help you spot magnets that are maybe hidden inside the product or in general magnetic fields. Except that it's so freaking tiny that it's, it's almost useless and that's my fault because there are multiple sizes available as product options and what did I do? I just picked the cheapest one without realizing it's going to be just one square inch in size. And I believe that happened uh, on my smartphone uh, because I think I ordered this from the mobile app. And I don't remember this precisely, but I think I did the exact same thing a few years back. And I think I still have another one of these small patches somewhere in my lab. And what a face palm moment. Anyway, a link to this will be in the description of the video. Just make sure you're getting the uh, correct size for what you need. Next up, I got a couple more different sizes for these uh, paper insulating washers and I like them. They're super cheap. I just want to keep different sizes available in a kit. I mainly use these between screws and PCB surface when there isn't a keep out area defined on the PCB design itself just to prevent the screw from uh, scratching away the solder mask finish and maybe damaging tracks or uh, causing a short circuit. Next up, I ordered a set of these metal uh, 
panel indicator lights and uh, these are not switches although uh, you might think they are they are just panel lights they have this metal case and they come in different colors they uh, require a 16 millimeter diameter hole for install and they come rated for different voltages from 3 volts all the way up to 220 volts uh, they work on both AC and DC so they must have a rectifier bridge inside because it doesn't matter which way uh, you connect these up they will still light up they're also rated for IP66 uh, waterproof rating so that's pretty nice and a uh, wide usage scenario for this I'm actually building this activity board for my toddler and I want to integrate a few of these lights obviously with me being an electrical engineer the board is going to have to contain some electronics lights sensors so it should be pretty cool let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of me uh, presenting that activity board in a previous mailbag I showed getting this uh, wireless uh, communication module uh, based on the SI4463 uh, chipset this is running on uh, 433 megahertz capable of up to one kilometer line of sight communication exposes a simple to use UART interface via the uh, onboard MCU uh, but at that time I only had one module which was pretty useless uh, well I ordered another one it arrived pretty quickly so now I have a working uh, set so this would be like your pretty cheap and convenient way of establishing some uh, low bandwidth wireless comms for some sensor nodes over some pretty long distance so check it out a link will be in the description of the video also for my activity board project I was thinking I might need a very small audio amplifier to play some audio feedback and I looked through my ex existing modules and I didn't have anything uh, tiny that would work uh, okay for uh, like a half watt speaker so I, I ordered these two from Aliexpress uh, the blue PCB is model number HXJ8002 it's a single channel approximately 1 watt into an 8 ohm load the input voltage range is 2 to 5.5 volts takes a stereo input which I assume it mixes together for that mono output uh, with a class D uh, architecture the second one which is the purple PCB is based on the popular uh, PAM8302 class D amplifier chipset also a mono output similar input voltage range of 2 to 5.5 volts rated for 1.3 watts output into an 8 ohm load the only advantage that I see with the purple board is the adjustment pot which might help you fine tune the uh, gain of this millimeter wave radar sensors are very popular these days and I've been working on some projects based on uh, one of these uh, sensors not this exact one but it's part of my professional work so I can't disclose that but uh, this one that you see here it seems like a very popular hobby grade choice it's a uh, module from Hylink it's the LD2410 part number and this works at 24 gigahertz it only has one TX and one RX antenna so given the frequency the number of antennas and its output power this won't give you the ability to sense at more than a few meters it won't give you the ability to sense things like a person breathing it won't give you the ability to determine the position of a person on an X and Y plane but still it will give you the ability to detect a person's presence and I wanted to test this to see if I can find the use for it in my smart home projects just because of its uh, high availability and low cost now the nice thing about this it's that it has a UART interface so you don't have to mess with all of the uh, lower level stuff it just gives you a UART interface via the onboard MCU and you pretty much get the data that you're interested in if a person is present or present or not via that UART interface I also ordered, ordered another model which did not arrive yet that one showed four antennas but they seem to be coupled together two by two so that might not be able to provide any extra positional data but just uh, more sensitivity and here is another curiosity find which Aliexpress showed in my uh, product recommendation list uh, this is an array of four photodiodes and there is a uh, small uh, protection film over it they're calling this a four quadrant photodiode and the part number for this is PDA5927 but there are obviously a bunch of variations to this in size, array, configuration, shape, wavelength, sensitivity but this one in particular works between 430 nanometers up to 1000 nanometers with a peak sensitivity at 940 nanometers and this being the infrared spectrum 
I don't do any work currently with optics, lasers, infrared stuff, but I imagine this could very well be used as part of an alignment system maybe. I don't know, I would really appreciate your feedback in the comments, uh, but I'm thinking if you shine a laser at this thing, you would be able to align that beam based on sensing where it hits in this matrix of four photodiodes. Having a larger array with smaller photodiodes would probably increase your uh, positional accuracy maybe. Uh, although even with these four photodiodes, you should be capable of positioning a uh, laser dot right in the middle of those four photodiodes. So yeah, this is an interesting find that made me wonder what this could be used for. And the last item in this mailbag is a very interesting set of copper pads for PCB repair. So if you've ever done any micro soldering or modern uh, gadget repair, you've most likely encountered lifted pads because the copper pads are so small they detach from the underlying FR4 substrate when heated. So what do you do when that happens? Well, you usually run some enamel wire directly to that pin, but there is an alternative to doing that. There are these kits of individual tiny pads in various sizes and shapes, and uh, you could simply just use one of these uh, pads to recreate the original. I haven't tried these yet, but I'm happy to have discovered them and to keep them in my toolbox. They are very affordable, so uh, well worth getting a set of these and uh, maybe trying them out at some point. That was all for today, I hope it was interesting to watch and let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items. Same as always, links for all of the products shown will be placed in the description of the video, so do check them out. Thank you for watching this, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button which is free and helps a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.